Well, I'm kind of cheating here. This isn't necessarily beyond good and evil, um, although I think that it definitely um, is tied in. It's actually more to do with the birth of tragedy by Nietzsche. Uh, the story sort of begins, or the book sort of begins, with the tale of King Midas, who um, the ancient Greek King Midas, who hunts down the uh, satyr, Silenus, and asks him, um, what's the most desirable thing? And Silenus answers, better never been, ne better never to have been born, or better still, or rather second best, is to be killed immediately. Now, that's life. Uh, that's sort of the point of departure of the birth of tragedy. Uh, but the most explosive and revolutionary bit of the birth of tragedy, if you ask me, is the um, notion that suffering um, is not always a bad thing. <laughs> um, and this is a revolutionary thing simply because it flies in the face of everything that we believe, more or less, as uh, moderns. The... Uh, classic cases will tell me what was so good about the Holocaust. Um, well, I'm not going to get into that. But what I will say is, think of all the suffering that we willingly endure in our lives for higher purposes. Or think of all the suffering that didn't seem like we were benefiting from it at the time, but we were. For example, I think that depression is possibly the worst thing that can befall a human being. I don't know, but it's it, at least in the scope of my ability to imagine. I think that depression might be um, the worst thing in the world. I, I can't imagine a worse state to be in, but at least a severe depression. It, to me, it's the distilled essence of suffering. I've been through that. I know what that state is. I don't feel that way anymore. And I think that uh, the way that I normally put it, somewhat poetically, is when they write the book on my life, or when my the book of my life is closed, it's entirely possible that my experiences with depression um, actually improved my life. On a continuum, uh, if you look at my life as a whole, I think that my experiences with depression, since they didn't kill me, uh, they nearly did, many times, but on the whole, it got my mind working on existential matters to the point where existential musings are that which has given my life value. <laughs> it's ironic, but when you sort of, when you see the state that I'm in when I'm, or if you saw the state that I was in when I was depressed, you would sort of think, well, the best thing to do is for this guy to be euthanized. Might have made sense at the time. But even though I was unaware of it, depression was actually hammering me into shape. Um, that's how it's difficult to quantify suffering. Suffering to the point where, let's say you're being, your head is being held underwater and you don't know when it's going, you're, someone's going to let your head back up out so you can breathe. That's, say that's depression. Uh, that's what I went through. But because of the fact that I went through this depressive period, I suddenly started to question, well, no, I've always been a, the sort of person that questioned everything, but that tendency went into sort of overdrive. And I started to ask questions, and it just never stopped. But some of the answers that I've come up with, or some of the methodologies that I've used to find answers have most certainly given my life meaning. Now, who decides whether or not my suffering has meaning or does not have meaning? Nobody else but me. Um, and that's what Nietzsche deals with in The Birth of Tragedy. He um, deals with the fact that the ancient Greeks, and I believe that he's right, had an essentially pessimistic view of the world. They believed that if you read, for example, if you read Homer, which I have, before I even discovered Nietzsche, before I even knew who he was, you discover that the ancient Greeks had almost a hellish view of the world. And yet, uh, more than any other people that have come down to us, the Greeks knew how to live. Why is this? 
well, suffering is part of being human, and we can be improved by it. We can gain from it. We can benefit from it. There were the classic case with the, which the ancient Greeks were aware of, the ancient Spartans, who accepted suffering. The Spartans are proverbial for suffering and hardship, willingly endured. Um, there's so many examples of that, of suffering and hardship that is willingly endured. And there's so many examples of people who are suffering and going through hardships and have no idea that it's actually enhancing the overall value and quality of their lives. I'm not saying that suffering is good. It's I'm just saying that we have to go beyond good and evil when we're talking about suffering. Because we don't know, and there's no way for us to know, the value of suffering. That goes for the value of pleasure as well. We don't know whether or not somebody is actually enjoying something. Richard Corey going home and shooting himself is the case of that. We don't know when somebody is getting no value whatsoever out of pleasure. Beyond suffering, beyond good and evil. Um, Nietzsche's pretty good at uh, making that case. Thank you.